Chapter 13, Cameron Boxer Who knew that being a good person would turn out to be so boring? Seriously, I gave up an entire day of video games for this? Boring? Pavel laughed at me. Haven't you been paying attention? Daphne tackled a senior citizen. It's the first time I've ever seen String compliment someone other than himself. Yeah, real entertaining, I muttered. I thought that reporter lady would have a heart attack when Daphne laid that guy out. If my parents read in the paper that the PAG's bad, I'll be right back where I started. No rule the world. Forget Daphne, he told me. Worry about a real problem. That cranky guy who's bossing Xavier around doesn't realize he's juggling Nitro. If he wakes up across town, that won't just be in the Clinker Chronicle. It'll make the front page. I need a break, I complained. From what? Pavel challenged. Technically, you haven't moved a single molecule of Earth. Look at Chuck. He's weeded two whole plots already. It was true. For some reason, Chuck was treating today like it was a real thing. Old ladies were lining up to get his attention. He was the darling of the senior citizen's garden. Where would a member of the awesome threesome get such a bad attitude? Well, I'm the president, I grumbled and I still say that the Positive Action Group doesn't exist. I hate to break it to you, Pavel retorted, but it's existing all around you in living color. There's even a reporter here to record it for prosperity. I sighed. Mr. Fanorama's busy trying to calm down the tackled guy. I'm going to check my clan. Your phone will get wet. I'll sneak into the lobby of the apartment building next door. Cover for me. But... I left him standing there. If I didn't get something decent into this wasted day, I was going to lose my mind. Besides, the way clan warfare worked, you could actually be invaded while you were offline. I didn't have that much faith in my fellow clan members to ride to the rescue and defend my base for me. Anyway, I'd cover for Pavel later so he could check on his own clan, and for Chuck too, if he could tear himself away from all that helping. With the guidance counselor distracted, it was easy to complete my disappearing act. I ducked in the side entrance and stood in the stairwell as the app opened with its usual fanfare. Sure enough, I'd suffered two attacks, although the damage wasn't serious. As I made the necessary repairs, I couldn't help noticing a puddle of water forming at my feet. At first, I assumed that rain was leaking in from outside. Then I noticed a tiny trickle running down the steps. Curious. I followed it up to the second floor. It was traveling in a thin stream shining in the fluorescent lights. The game app chirped an alert. I ignored it. That didn't really go with my lifestyle, but by this time I was really interested to see where the water was coming from. I traced the trickle to the door of apartment 206. There it was more than a trickle. It was burbling out over the door saddle. I knocked. Hello? Uh, I think there's a leak in your apartment. I heard a faint voice and a shuffling sound. Someone was definitely in there, but nobody came. The game chirped again, and I was sorely tempted to go back to it. After all, this was none of my business, and whoever was in 206 obviously didn't need my help, or he would have answered the door. Maybe... I thought of another situation where a guy didn't respond to the people who were trying to tell him something bad was happening to his house. That guy hadn't answered the door either, and now he didn't have one, because the fire department had smashed it up. I seriously doubted that anyone in a senior citizen's building was ignoring my knock because he was battling evil McKill people, but it seemed like somebody in there was in trouble. I called Pavel, but he didn't pick up. Chuck didn't answer either. It figured. The guy was so occupied with his fan club of old ladies that when he was needed for real helping, he was AWOL. Out of options, I ran back downstairs, my sneakers splashing in the growing stream. I burst out of the building, waving my arms and yelling. Everybody was going to know that I'd been goofing off, but I couldn't worry about that now. Come quick, I bellowed. There's an emergency. Mr. Fanatic shot me an angry look. Cameron, what do you think you're doing? String must have been tired of showing off because he dropped his shovel and started toward me. Let's go. Our president needs us. I doubt anybody there cared that I was president. 
but by this time the volunteers were anxious for a break. They all came running, even Xavier, who seemed relieved to abandon his obnoxious taskmaster. "'Where is everybody going?' our faculty advisor demanded. Scowling beside him, Audra Clinker was making notes again. My loving sister, Melody, came roaring up to me, Katrina hot on her heels. "'What's going on, Cam? What are you up to now?' "'Why do you assume it's a bad thing?' I demanded. "'Because I know you.' There was no time to fight with her. I led the troops up the wet steps and down the hall to 206. We left a trail of mud behind us, earth from the garden mixing with the steady trickle from upstairs. "'That's where the water's coming from,' I explained breathlessly. "'There's someone in there, but nobody answers. Stand back,' ordered Freeland McBean. "'No door is a match for the string.' He hurled himself at 206, bounced off, and landed in a heap on the floor. It was the first time I saw Xavier smile. The big guy pulled a fire extinguisher off the wall and delivered a heavy blow to the knob. There was a crack, and the door swung open. Mr. Fantasy pounded to the top of the stairs just in time to witness this. "'Ah, oh, Xavier,' he moaned. "'You promised you'd stay out of trouble.' We burst into the apartment, and that's where we saw the elderly woman who lived there. She had begun to fill the kitchen sink to do her dishes, tripped, and hit her head on the marble counter. She lay on the tiles, semi-conscious, the overflowing water puddling around her and streaming past her down the hall and out the front door. We could hear Audra Clinker's shrill voice all the way down the hall. This isn't a positive action group, it's a wrecking crew. I'm calling the police. She burst to the front, her cell phone at her ear, and froze at the sight of Xavier helping the victim sit up and lean against him. Pavel rushed to turn off the tap. Xavier looked at the reporter. An ambulance would be better. 